Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. So today I'm going to be making one of my absolute favorite new designs and that is a press mold leaf soap dish. So first I'm starting with just wedging up some recycled clay. Once it's wedged, I'm just going to roll out a slab. Um, I'm rolling the slab to half centimeter thickness, so five millimeters. Um, and that's why I have these wooden sticks on either end that are five millimeters wide. And then I can roll the slab to exactly five millimeters. When you're rolling out a slab, it's important to flip the clay a bunch. You don't want to roll out too much in one go. This can uh, stress the clay out too much and cause cracking later on. So just go slowly, rolling a bit at a time, and make sure you're flipping your clay as you go. And then as always, when I roll out a slab, I'm just going to compress the clay with my rib. So I'm just stroking the clay uh, and compressing the clay particles closely together. This will also help with things like cracking and warping. So I always wait about an hour for the clay to dry out a little bit. This will depend on your local climate and uh, the humidity in your studio. But for me, about one hour is good. As the clay dries out a little bit, it will be stiffer and easier to cut out. So I'm laying the cutouts on some newspaper because I'm going to let them dry out again to get a little bit stiffer. And I like to put it on newspaper so that the clay can uh, shrink and move a little bit as it's drying. So now I've waited until the clay is a bit stiffer so it will actually hold its shape when I press it into the mold. I have this plaster mold that I made from a leaf and I actually have a demonstration in a old reel that I made on Instagram. So if you're curious about how I made this plaster mold, just uh, look for this image in uh, my reels on Instagram and that will show you the whole process. You can find me at Pottery to the People. So when I'm applying the slab to this mold, it's really important that I push in all of the details. So I really take my time here and um, yeah, get my fingers into all of the little bumps on the leaf. I really want these groups to be deep enough because these are actually the water channels that the water from the soap will run off into. So it's really important that these bumps are very well defined. And then you just have to be quite careful as you're taking it off to not deform the shape. You saw me already make this little support for the leaves. Um, this is how I help them to keep their shape as they dry out. So it's now the next day. I let my leaves dry out even more and you can sort of see what the status is now. Um, they have their shape quite uh, firmly, but they're still a little bit rough, so I've got to do some cleaning up on these edges. First, I'm just going to take my rib and kind of shave off the crumbly edges, any sharp edges. Um, I'm just trying to like round them out. And 
And then I'm going to take my sponge and really smooth out those edges. Next, I'm going to add the feet. So I make these little cone-shaped feet for them, three of them. And I do that by rolling the clay in my hands, sort of like a coil, but with a taper at the end, and cutting off the end. And then I have this little stencil of where I know the feet should go. I've been meaning for ages to make these holes a little bit bigger so I can just scratch the holes without having to do it twice. But, um, you know, it's one of those things that you just procrastinate. So after scoring, I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I'm just adding some water with this paintbrush now. And then I'll score the feet and stick them right on. So I'm not using slip. Uh, whenever I'm working with fresh clay, I find that water is absolutely enough. If you're attaching two leather hard pieces together, I prefer to use slip. But if you have a leather hard piece that you're attaching to some fresh clay, I find that water is just fine. I'm just going to take my sponge and clean up those feet a little bit, just the connections, trying to make them nice and smooth. And then I can add the holes. So of course a soap dish needs some holes. So I like to add three holes to these and I put them in very specific points where the veins come together um, because the veins act like water channels so that the water can flow down from the soap into these channels and out the hole. And if you're curious about the tool I'm using, it's just called a hole cutter. It just works by twisting it. Um, I'm sure that most ceramic suppliers will have a tool like this. It's nothing special. So I'll let the soap dishes dry out for a week and then I'll go ahead and put them into the bisque kiln. And then the bisque firing always takes two days and you'll notice on the top of the kiln I have a ton of student work. So in addition to making my own pottery, I also run a community studio in case you didn't know. And uh, these are all the pots that have been made by beginners and intermediate folks in our wheel classes and in our hand building classes. So after unloading them from the bisque kiln, I'm going to sand them a little bit. I want to make sure that these holes are really nice and smooth and not going to have any sharp bumps or anything. And of course, I'm wet sanding here and I very much recommend if you're going to sand your pottery, you use the wet sanding method. Um, I have another video that explains the whole deal with sanding and wet sanding and how to sand safely. You can check out my link down below if you want to watch that. 
So after wet sanding, it's really important that you let your bisque dry out completely. So I usually just wait overnight uh, until the next day to glaze my pottery. So I really enjoy glazing these leaves because I can just kind of grab them with the three feet. So I put three fingers on the three feet, kind of like a claw, and I hold them and then I can just dip them straight in. And because of the holes, it glazes nice and evenly throughout. They're a little tricky to set down from holding them with the three feet, but I've got kind of a system. And then after glazing, I just clean up the feet a little bit in case any drips happened. I just want to make a nice clean foot. And then they go into the kiln again for the final fire. So we bisque at 900 degrees Celsius and the final fire I'm doing here is 1250. And here's the final result. I just love these leaf soap dishes. Um, I have one in every instance in my house that I use a soap dish. They drain beautifully. The soap is always able to dry out and they just look so, so pretty. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed that video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you decide to make this project, I would love it if you tag me on Instagram. You can find me at Pottery to the People. And please, if you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out if you just press the like button down below. This helps tell the algorithm that this video was helpful for you and makes it possible to reach new potters. So that's it for me today. I hope you guys have a lovely and creative day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.